easy winds, easy sewing. One foot colder weather, one foot hotter weather. Bat wing style. Hi sewing friends, I'm Karina from LiftingPinsAndNeedles.com. Welcome to this channel that is all about sewing, limitless sewing, and I'm excited to share two super, 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 super easy neat makes. I was done in like an hour and a half with both of them. Very easy winds, easy to fit, and it's brand new from Pattern Emporium. The name is just the cutest. It's called Chasing Butterflies, and it's an exaggerated bat wing style. It's a super easy fit, lots of positive ease around everywhere <laughs> and then it just comes slightly in at the hips, I mean it's not tight although it could be if you added a hem band which is one of the options but on the side you have really nice blousing. You can choose different options like the type of neckline, you can do a higher one which is a crew with a neck band. On that same cut line you can add a taller piece that you roll up like a turtleneck situation or you can do a relaxed lower cut line. That's the one that I always use because it's what I'm most comfortable in. There are separate pattern pieces so you can make add-ons. So you can make your own neck warmer in the same fabric and slide it on and then it looks like you're wearing a turtleneck sweater. Then you can take it off if you get hot. And there's also an infinity scarf, you know those round ones that you just put around you like that? You have a long sleeve, it goes super slim towards the forearm and reach. For the full length you can hem it normal or add a cuff. For the half sleeve you need to add a cuff just to bring it in. And there's different length options. The short version will be just at the hip bones easy to do a french tuck if your fabric is light enough the second length is about two inches below the hip bone so if you touch here it will end up being around the mid hip and then the lowest one is four inches below the hip bone which depending on your height might be at your full hip i've decided to do the second length that will be at the mid hip that's usually what i prefer when pattern emporium has a new pattern they have it 15 percent off for three days that runs through monday the 3rd of july midday but in australia because it's an Australian brand. Over here it'll be Sunday night. And other than the Chasing Butterflies, which is the new pattern, you'll find a lot of bottoms that are also 15% off. So have a look, I'll leave you the link. You can see all the patterns that are 15% off. Use my affiliate link if you'd like to support my work. It doesn't cost you any extra and I receive a small commission. That is one of the ways I make an income doing what I do. So thank you so much if you do use my link. You need knit fabric here. Don't try to do this with a woven. And you can use fabric that stretches horizontally and vertically. But if your fabric stretches vertically less or just has give, I think it's also going to work. And the way it's gonna work is that Kate, the designer owner, of Pattern Emporium has sort of changed the grain line of the garment. If you look at me now and you put fabric here, the selvages would be going like this, up and down, which means my garment would have less vertical ease and more horizontal ease, which is what you usually want with neat styles. In this case, it's the other way around. So the selvages would be here, which means that the stretch across the body would be less. And that's fine because you have all that ease, but then the stretch vertically would be a bit more which is what you need so that this slim style of the sleeve can stretch vertically on this area and fit comfortably. So make sure you pay attention to the grain lines. And there's so many neat fabrics that you can use. I'm just gonna put an asterisk just to be aware that rayon spandex, modal, bamboo spandex, those are gonna look larger than what you originally thought because those are fabrics that just, they just grow, they just get longer. So you might end up cutting one size, putting it on and over time it's just way bigger than what you thought so just be aware it's not that you can't use them but the fit will be different you can use sweater knits rib knits some soft rayon french terry would be amazing cable knit double brush poly and an athletic knit is also super good for this one other ones that are less drapey i would just be aware that they might not look as drapey on the side here like cotton lycra or ponty roma some sweat shirtings it's not that you can't make it with those but the bat wing style will just be more exaggerated and you won't get that nice blousing on the side which for me is desirable when I have a garment that has a little extra ease like this one. So I kept my fabrics fairly lightweight and fairly drapey. You can see my zebra athletic knit here has a really nice amount of drape. Stretches in every direction. It's just going to be so easy to sew and wear. And the zebra print, what can I say? One of the few animal prints I really enjoy. And then the second one I have is a sweater knit that I've been holding for years. I kid you not, I bought this one in maybe 2015 or 16 and it's finally made into a garment. And the print is amazing it's so soft it's fairly lightweight very drapey super appropriate for this one 
Another thing I want to point out, and this is true for most knit garments anyway, just make sure that the fabric you want to use for your neck band has enough recovery and enough spandex in there. For example, my sweater knit, that is not appropriate for a neck band. I know over time it's just going to stretch out and just look terrible. It's only got 3% spandex in there. I decided to use a rib knit for that neck band. Just make sure your neck band is going to hold the test of time. So you might want to use another fabric for your neck band if your main fabric doesn't meet the requirements and it just doesn't stretch and recover nicely like it should. The sizing is from 4 to 30 Australian. It's a design that's super easy to fit. I wouldn't fuss about it. I would even make this as gifts. It would be so easy. You basically need the high bust measurement and choose from there. If you want to, you can blend out at the hips if your hips are larger than your bust. But in essence, it's a really easy, relaxed fit. For me, in the measurements in the chart, I'm a size 18 for Pattern Emporium. It's what I usually sew. But in this case, I just sized down to a size 16 and I'm very happy with my choice. I still have plenty of room, but just a little bit less. The amount of ease on your garments is really a personal preference. So if you are happy enough to size down one size, that is all I would size down. I would not sew two sizes less. I wouldn't size up for this one either because you don't want this gaping. So one size less was perfect for me. No fitting adjustments, just easy peasy, cut, sew, bam. <laughs> Just the best experience. So I have filmed the sewing for you. It's a very, very short clip. What can I say? This is just so easy. It's just such an easy win. So let's see. This is one of my Chasing Butterfly bat wing tops. I'm using an athletic knit. In this case, I'm using the half sleeve. It's a little shorter. These little pieces are going to be the cuffs around there. That long piece will just be the neckline for my relaxed scoop neckline. There is a higher one that's a crew. Then the neckline here will just be a little shorter. You can add a hem band if you want to or you can just hem it normal. The other version I'm making is going to be exactly the same. It's just going to have the full length sleeve right there also with a little cuff. And I just can't tell you how easy the sewing is going to be here. <laughs> it's just a few seams. I've already got them pinned actually and I'm going to use the serger for everything basically. I'm first going to start sewing the shoulder seams which are pretty long and after I finish the shoulder seams I'm going to go ahead and sew the side seams right here and my neckband divide the neckline into quarters divide the neckband into quarters and then just sew on the round so it'll be pretty relaxing and I've got two of these to make I don't think it's going to take me more than an hour and a half to make both of them ready for some fun I pinned my top ahead of time and I pinned it quite far away from where I'm actually going to surge so I don't have to waste time removing pins just makes it easier and more relaxing then I can just remove them all at the end I'm not trimming away anything with the serger because the seam allowance is only a quarter of an inch so pretty straight seams for these shoulder seams now I'm sewing the side seam and because it's a bat wing it's actually the side seam and the sleeve all in one so it's super easy just slightly curved before I get to the end here of my sleeve you can see this is a sleeve I think some people might find it easier to just extend this first after sewing the shoulder seam then folding your little cuff lengthwise wrong sides together and then sewing on the cuff from one edge to the other first so that it's already attached and then sewing the bottom of the seam underneath your arm I think it could be easier like that if you have problems sewing small circumferences but that's not my case I don't have a problem sewing small circumferences both are valid it's up to you this is one of the few steps I'm gonna do with the sewing machine and I'm just sewing my neckband together just short little seams quarter of an inch seam allowance find it less bulky than doing it with the serger after sewing the little seam of the neckband I've just folded it all wrong sides together and divided my neckband into four I didn't leave this seam at the center back this is actually the pin that's going to match my center back here this is going to be offset to the side and I've divided the neckline into four you actually don't need to divide it into four because the little marks are on the pattern piece already so all you have to do is match up your quarter point your neckband is always going to be a little short than the neckline and then we're just going to stretch this out while we serge all of these layers together and that will fix the neckband in place. Stretching the neckband slightly as I go with each quarter point and I'm just making sure to keep the three raw edges together at all times because this is curved. I take my sweet time sewing my neckbands. I have no rush. I don't want to do it fast and end up with wobbly seams and raw areas that move around.
and I'm just going to press this flat. I don't really think I need to top stitch. I'm really not a fan of top stitching neck bands down. I don't think it looks very nice. And if you can get the desired effect of it being nice and flat with just a lot of steam, I'll go for that. I do with the sewing machine and I'm just sewing my cuffs together. I always prefer doing this with the sewing machine so I can press the seam open. This is the end of my half sleeve there and I have my cuff. They're quite tiny cuffs. I've done the same thing I did with the neckband, just folded it wrong sides together and I'm going to match the seam to the seam under the arm here and then this one is going to be over here. So again your cuff is going to be a little bit smaller than the sleeve opening and that's just going to help it stay in place. Now to sew this little cuff because it's so small I'm just going to turn the garment the other way around, wrong sides out. When I have the garment like this, I end up with the cuff inside and then I can put this on the serger that way and it's so much easier to have the access around. As I sew this cuff, I'm also stretching a little to match the circumference of the bottom of the sleeve because it is a little bit smaller. And you can sew a baby cuff this way. I've sewn tiny cuffs and I've never had a problem. I always find it easier to just switch this to just flip the garment and do it like that having the cuff inside and it just allows you to go around and around rather than trying to do this. So that's a tip. <laughs> I didn't film the hem, that would be step number five. It's very easy, just fold it up. It's about one inch hem allowance. Searched at first, folded it up. And I like to hand baste it first and then I top stitch. I used a narrow zigzag here. I just want the hem to be super discreet. It will allow the stretch that you need. And I'd rather do this with fabrics that have high contrast rather than doing the twin needle. I think you would be able to see that much more. And I want the hem to be there but not to be really, really, really seen because I don't think hems are ever pretty, you know? This is my first one. I actually have so much more yardage of this fabric so expect to see it in other things, maybe dresses. It's a really nice athletic knit. It's medium weight but it still has a really nice amount of drape. Super stretchy. I've got the half sleeve with a cuff right there. You can see the shape of this cuff. No hem band, I just prefer a clean look and a clean hem usually. It's rare that I sew a hem band. It just brings it closer to the body and sometimes it's just not what I want. <laughs> so what can I say? Couple of seams, shoulder seams, side seams, neck band, cuff, hem, you're done. Basically five simple steps and it's so nice. Everything done with the serger, except for these little seams that sew the neck bands together. I like doing those on the machine as you saw. I have had a lot of fun with the try-on lookbooks. My house, it's a mess. <laughs> so you're going to see multiple, multiple styling options. Let's see. This is my first Chasing Butterflies top from Pattern Emporium. I sized down one size, so this is a size 16. There is a shorter length version and a longer one. I have a middle one here. And I have a half sleeve with a little cuff. You'll see the details up closer. Love this dramatic bat wing. I think it's really nice. This athletic knit is super cool to wear for in between weather. The zebra print is just amazing. <laughs> Look at this bat wing style. It's so good. It's so easy to sew and so comfortable to wear and I think a drapey fabric is go always going to look really nice. I've got a lower relaxed neckline with a neckband, you can make it higher. There you can see the little cuffs and I can happily fly away in my batwing top. There is my neckband up closer, super easy to sew, I didn't top stitch mine. And I've just got it paired with a classic denim skirt here, very comfortable look and I just feel really amazing in this batwing top. <laughs> You'll see it styled many many ways. This is the Soleil All Day Skirt from Pattern Emporium and I've got some really old combat boots that are super comfy to wear. I think the combat boots dresses the outfit down a little so I'm not that dressed up and the top is just great. As you see these looks, you'll see that different styles of silhouettes in your bottoms can work with this. So this is a more fitted type of style and I think it works really well with the bat wing. Even though the top has a lot of ease around the bust and waist, it's not really slouchy at the hips where it matters. I think it works. Here is my top with my sporty lounge skirt in stretch velvet. I really love the curved hem of this one, this comfy pocket. This skirt is a little less formal than others and I really love that curved hem that shows a little bit of the leg on the side. I've got comfy block sandals. I don't believe in uncomfortable shoes so anything you see me wear is something I could walk around for hours. This type of skirt is not too fitted nor loose, it's just right, it's pull up very comfortable and it goes really well with this style. Thank you. 
This one's a little different. I've got super wide leg pants. These are pretty heavy knit fabric, but they are still very drapey. And just to make it a little different, I've got gold accessories, golden loafers, and a little crossbody bag just to bring some light into the outfit, not make it so basic, black and white. And you can see the silhouette of the bat wing top works really well with this type of wide leg pant. I love metallic accessories, you know, gold and silver, just nice. I don't wear jewelry, so this is the way I get metallics into my outfit. This exact outfit is one I would wear on a plane. I'd be super comfortable and feel like I don't look too sloppy. Great traveling outfit in my opinion for a plane. Here is a bold look with my other body lounge skirt. This is a stretch suede in burgundy, always looks red on screen. Any color bottom is gonna go with this white and black zebra top. And I think this looks really nice, really put together, but also super comfortable. I put these looks together in like 30 seconds and I would actually wear this out exactly like this. I never put together fake looks that I wouldn't actually wear. Combination of colors makes me really happy. Also matches the flowers behind me, so that's nice. <laughs> Another type of bottom here is a fitted pant. These aren't skinny pants, they're just straight leg. They have a slit on the side. If you look closely, I have zebra sneakers. It might seem a little too much, but not for me. I feel really fun in this outfit. You can see that a fitted silhouette on the bottom is also gonna work with the top and yeah, I can just wear all the styles you want and I think it would look amazing. <laughs> And here's the final look for this top. Now I've got a pair of shorts. My sandals have a comfy heel and they match the color of my skin perfect. And those types of shoes are always a safe bet. These are sort of shorter culottes. They look like a skirt, but they are shorts and they reach right above the knee. It's a good length for me because of my height. I don't think I could wear shorter shorts than this. After filming this, I actually kept this on for the whole rest of the day because it was pretty warm today. So I was actually wearing this today for my life. Always the lower neckline for me, that's just what I feel good in and it just suits my climate. If I get cold, I have plenty of silk scarves to wear and this one has the full length. You can see that it looks quite slim there. You might think, oh my gosh, that's not going to fit. But remember the grain line was switched so that you have all the stretch in this area. So pay attention to the grain line. Don't just think you can just cut it as usual. Follow the instructions and you'll get a nice fit. The grain line is actually going this way. This would be the vertical ease of the fabric and it's a little less as you can see, but that doesn't matter because you have all the ease. Where most of the stretch is, is going up and down and you need that for this area of the sleeve so that it's nice and comfortable. If you cut it the other way, it would end up being super tight and comfortable and you wouldn't be able to move your arm in this section. And it's so drapey, so amazing. Look at this print. I did not attempt to match the shoulder seams. That would have been impossible and not made good use of my fabric and I don't think it's too noticeable. There's a time and a place for that. And if this had been stripes, I would have done everything I could to match up the stripes. I used the rib knit for my neckband. Just knowing rib knit and that it stretches a little more, I just made my neckband about an inch shorter than the pattern piece and I'm happy with that. You have to be careful, you know, you have a pattern piece there, but sometimes you need to think about the length that you actually want to cut out depending on the type of fabric you're using for your neckband. Little tiny cuffs, simple hem. I used a narrow zigzag for my hems. I didn't use the twin needle and you can barely see that it's there. The thread actually just sort of went inside the sweater knit, so I'm very happy you can't see it. And yeah, lots of fun styling this, so let's see. Here is my second Chasing Butterflies, and this one's more for cooler weather because I've got a really light sweater knit. I love the print here, and I love the denim skirt that brings the blue out of the print in the sweater knit. Look at my blue sneakers, aren't they cool? <laughs> I love them. This is a really wearable outfit for me, and I could be super comfortable and feel really good. This skirt has a semi-fitted silhouette, and it goes really well with the Chasing Butterflies top. I think you should keep the fabric drapey 
that's why I chose this sweater knit because it's super drapey and the blousing you get on the sides is not going to stick away. I've got a full length sleeve here with the little cuffs as you can see, those were fun to sew. And on the top I have my lower neckline with rib knit there for the neckband and it was a super nice insertion. I made my rib knit neckband an inch shorter than the pattern just because I know rib knit works like that. Love the colour combo here with the grey tones and the blues, it's just beautiful, I love these colours. Of course I had to bring my long sleigh or day skirt, in this case I have more dressy boots, these are block heel, leather, pointy, very classic ones that you could always wear for years to come, they were a really good investment for me. And the sweater goes right in there and looks perfect with the silhouette of the skirt, the colours in the sweater, just everything. <laughs> Now staying with skirts, this is a shorter one, my sporty lounge skirt, you saw it with the zebra print, it goes perfect with this one as well of course. Grey shoes with a comfy heel and a grey bag, this could be an autumn church outfit for me and I'd feel really good. I mentioned church outfits because where I go at least we wear skirts and dresses, we don't go to church with pants. Just as context, the, the fabric, if you could feel it, oh my gosh, you would never take this off. Here are my wide leg pants again and in this case I've got metallic loafers, silver with a silver bag in leather and this could be another comfy plain outfit for me, so comfortable, very warm and I'll tell you more about these pants later on, it's a work in progress, it's a hack <laughs> but they are so drapey and they go with a lot of the tops that I wear and this is no exception. If you could feel the way I feel right now, oh, it's just like wearing pajamas but not looking like I'm wearing pajamas basically. <laughs> and I mentioned how I feel because that's really important to me, I'm really in tune with the way that clothes make me feel. I keep extending my arms, you'll get sick of me. Here I've got my slim pants, they're not skinny jeans, I've got some basic clothes shoes for winter. I tend to wear different size bags, just depends on where I'm going and this bag is huge because it would carry a water bottle and like a lot of things. It's very basic, just grab these, throw them on and I'm set to walk out of the house. I could have looked for more styling options but yeah, I've done a lot today. <laughs> I hope that was as fun for you to see as it was for me to film. You should see my living room. Oh my gosh, I have to enlist some help from my family to put all those clothes away, shoes and bags, just all over the living room, but it's so worth it. I love dressing up and love it. I hope you enjoyed the fashion show. I know the neighbor doing her garden has been watching me the whole time. Am I embarrassed? No. <laughs> I love them so much. I want a black sweater knit version. I think it would be a workhorse in my wardrobe. And you can see with the styling, you can use any type of bottom really. It just depends on what you want to do and where you want to go. But you know, wide leg, slim leg, short skirt, long skirt, denim skirt. I mean, you can do a lot with this and it's so nice. I love my versions. So nice to make up, whip up. Just a very wonderful experience as always. Don't forget to check out the sale, 15% off for the Chasing Butterflies and also the bottoms. You'll find many other patterns are also 15% off. Remember this goes up to Monday the 3rd of July, noon, but in Australia, Sunday night over here the 2nd of July. I'm just going to fly off in my bat wings and I'll see you again very soon on this channel. Bye!